what's going on my dear friends today in this video let's learn and master the angular frameworks latest version so let's get started All right, so guys, in the previous lecture, we learned how to deal with the data flow child to the parent component. For this, we use two approaches, view child and the output event approach. Uh, so let's look at how these decorators are working and what are the difference between these two approaches. So first, let's uh, look at the first approach, which is the view child decorator. So guys, uh, with this, we are directly looking inside of the child component and we'll access the data what we need. Think this is like something uh, supermarket. In supermarket, they let us in without any problem with full access. And we can go around and we can take whatever the things we need. Right? This is also same like this. So with the view child, we are giving the full access of the child component to the parent component. So parent component can get into the child component, access all the data stored inside of this child component. So guys, but we have a problem here. I think we need to buy just a toilet paper and we are going to the supermarket. We have to find the toilet paper section and we have to check out. So if the supermarket is a small uh, one with few items, then we can easily find the item and check out. But think about a big supermarket chain. Inside of that, we can see so many items, categories and thousands of varieties and also it is too big, right? So we have to go around and around to find the single toilet paper and we have to wait in the billing big queues just to buy a single toilet paper. It will very time consuming and it can easily make us exhausted, right? So the same thing can apply to the view child approach. So with the view child, we are accessing the child component. If the component is with just one or two variables, in that case, we can simply access the data. But think if the child component has so many variables and we want to access one of them using view child. So in this case, view child has to look through all of the variables and access the variables that we need and has to bring out back to the parent component. So this is something sound like a heavy task. So this can be slow down our application to get a just single variable. We are accessing hundreds of variables. It's not too good, right? So as a solution for this, we have the output decorator and the event emitter approach. So with this, we are just sending only the required data to the parent component from the child component, rather giving full access to the child component. If you take the same example scenario to buy a toilet paper roll, Rather going to a big supermarket, we can simply go to a small grocery shop and we can ask the shop owner what we need and they will provide us. So in a small grocery shop, we don't have the full access like big supermarket. We will ask what we need from the shop owner or any shop employee. Then they are the one access the shop inventory and bring us what we asked, right? So the same thing can apply to the output event emitter approach as well. In here, we will not get access to the child component. The event emitter is the one sending our required data to the parent component. So with the output decorator, we are creating the bridge between child to parent component and this event emitter will bring the required data to the parent component. Guys, I just took the supermarket ex concept for this to explain this for you guys to understand this better. But this is not like a supermarket concept. There is more. So just remember how these two approaches works. So hope you guys got the idea. Alright guys, now hope you guys have a clear picture about how to share a data between parent component to the child component and vice versa. So now in this lecture, let's look at another approach to sharing data from parent to child component, 
which is using the ng content or the content projection approach in angular so what the heck is this ng content well think of it as a special window in our component that allow us to pass a piece of data from a parent component directly into child component um, wait let's break it down a bit more you guys know already how we have been passing data to child components using input decorator right so the ng content also same like that but with this we can send an entire block of html and we can place it exactly where we want in the child component field so let's see this in action let's think about a real world example imagine we are creating a card component for our application sometimes we want the card to display a user profile sometimes a product and sometimes a blog article or something so in this case instead of creating three separate card components we can create one flexible card component using the ng content so let's dive in so guys uh, for this let's create another new component uh, how do we do that yes of course you guys already know about it right so we can generate a component using the angular cli so go to the vs code integrated terminal and add this command ng generate component and give it a name something card so in order to execute this command hit enter perfect now we have the component next let's load this inside the browser so how do we do that very simple in order to load this component inside the browser view we have to add the component selector inside the app component so this component selector is uh, we can find this inside the component is file right so this new card component selector is this app dash card so add this inside the app component html file as a custom html tag now as you guys can see here we are getting this compile error why is that so of course this is a standalone component so in order to prevent this error we have to import this component to this app component so inside the app component ts file inside this imports array add the cards component that's it so save this and go to the browser as you guys can see here we got this text which is coming from the card component all right so guys next let's work on the ng content guys now i want to use this card component to load the user profile inside the browser so for this uh, first we have to add the ng content tags inside the card component so inside the card component html file add this ng dash content custom html tags opening and closing html tags that's it now inside the app component between these card component selectors we can pass the data that we want to render inside the card component so for now let's pass a simple p tag with a text something this is loaded using ng content that's it so save this all and go to the browser as you guys can see here inside this we can see text card is working this is coming from the card component but down here we got this text loaded using ng content this is coming from the app component and it's rendered inside the card component so guys this is how we pass template data from parent component to the child component so this ng content will render whatever the data we send between the component selector from the parent component all right guys in the previous i told that i want to use the same card component to show two different values so in this app component i want to load the user details and also i want to load the post details from the post list component so how do we do that so first inside this let's load the user details very simple between this card component selector pass the values that we want to load so we load the user details so the set the username inside of h2 tags open and close h2 tags 
and inside that set a username something john doe down here set the user join date put this inside of p tags set a dummy date next let's pass the user description something dummy paragraph text that's it so save this and go to the browser we can see the user details now think i want to load the post details in another card so for this we'll add the card component inside the post list component so go to the post list component html file and add the card component selector So guys, now this post list component is the parent component of this card component. So now from here, we can send whatever the data that we want to load inside the card component. So from here, I want to send post details unlike the previous user details. So pass the data between these component selector tags. Uh, inside of H2 tags, pass the blog title, something, blog post title, one next pass the blog publish date inside of p tags next pass the blog summary something dummy text that's it so save this and go to the browser as you guys can see here this time we got two cards this user card loaded from the app component and this post card loaded from the post list component so for this two layout we used the same single card component so this is one of the reusable component example using the content projection in angular hope you guys got the idea all right so guys now let's look at another feature coming with this content projection which is the multi-slot content projection so guys previously we simply passed these all data into this one ng content so think if this card layout has either a would add something footer or the action area so in the header area i want to place the username in the body area i want to place the user details in the action area or the footer i want to place an action button so how do we do that for this we can use the multi-slot content projection approach in angular right so let's see this in action so go to the card component html file inside this now remove this ng content tags now think we have a card div inside that we have these three sections one for the card header for this let's create heading tags inside that let's add a ng content tag now I want to load the header text inside this. Let's load a username inside this. So I will pass this username from the app component. So inside the card selector, let's remove the previous tags. And now let's just pass only the username, right? So let's add the username inside of span tags. So add the span tags. So open and close span tags. And between these, let's add a dummy username, something username now save this and go to the browser we can see the username here if you look at the code inside the browser inside this card component we got this header section inside this we can see the username loaded inside the ng content perfect so now what i want to do is i want to add the user details inside of the card body so for this we have to modify the card component so go to the card components HTML file and add this after this header add a div tags so guys we'll use the div tags for the card body now again inside this add another ng content tags so here we have project the user details that's it so save this and go to the app components HTML file and inside this now let's pass the user's name so for this let's create a h1 tags and the username is john doe 
that's it so save this and go to the browser now inside the card we got this weave but guys if you look at the browser codes in here this time this ng content projected the contents inside this body deep not inside the header tags so what's going on here can you guys guess guys the problem here is now inside this card component we are added these two ng content tags so when we have more than one ng content tags this will automatically load the data inside the last ng content tag so what if i add another ng content down here now this time the content is projected inside this outside ng content so guys once again so when we have more than one ng content tags this will automatically load the data inside the last ng content tag hope you guys got the idea all right so in order to prevent this we can give a unique identifier to each ng content tags and using that identifier we can simply project the content that we want to load inside the particular section for example we want to load only the username inside the header and user details inside the card body um let's see this in action so for this simply add a property name for this ng content tags so inside of square brackets we'll name this ng content as header next we have to assign this to a special type of attribute called select so pass this here and at last don't forget to put this inside of quotes next we'll name the second ng content as body so first the attribute select after this equal sign and add this inside of square brackets body so now we have given the unique identifiers for this so now save this and go to the app component HTML file now this time let's load this username inside the header area for this guys we gave the identifier as header so simply pass that inside this span text next we load this inside the body area so add the identifier inside this user's name h1 tags that's it simple right so now save this and go to the browser we got the data here if you look at the browser elements this time the username loaded inside the header area and the user's name john doe loaded inside the body div if you look further down here in the last ng content we got nothing why is that this time we are directly binding the content to each section ng content using the unique identifier right perfect so guys before the end of this lecture i want to add an action button inside the footer area so how do we add that very simple again inside the card component create a footer section and inside that add the ng content tags now in order to load the content inside this we have to give it a name something footer so do this using the select attribute same like previous now next from the parent component send the data so i want to set an action button for this so create a button after this and set the button as something we've profile now in order to load this inside the footer we have to pass the identifier name which is footer that's it so save this and go to the browser inside this we got the button if you look at the code now so inside this we can see the button is loaded inside the footer area so guys this is how we deal with multi-slot content projection in angular so hope you guys got the idea